Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about TSH levels. I'm going to be talking about what's a normal level, what's a normal level if you are just trying to be healthy, what's a normal level if you are taking thyroid medication, and we're going to be breaking that down by ranges here. So if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist that specializes in thyroid function. I specialize in treating hormone imbalances and also in the weight loss. So if you're interested in any of those things, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell because you're going to like what you see, I think. So, all right, let's talk about TSH levels. And to do that, we are going to get our whiteboard out. So whenever I talk about TSH levels, there's a couple things you need to know. First of all is where we're talking about it. And then we also need to break it down by the range in the difference between normal and optimal levels. So I'm going to explain all of these things to you um, if you've never heard of this, because it's a really important concept for a lot of people, both if you have thyroid disease and also if you're just trying to figure out what's healthy and what isn't. So remember, so first of all, TSH level is what we're on today. And we want I want to show you where it fits in here. So first of all, you have in the thyroid system, you have your pituitary gland, which is in your brain, and that pituitary gland secretes TSH. Okay, so this is where we're looking, TSH. And TSH acts on the thyroid gland and tells the thyroid gland to produce T4 and T3. That's basically how it works, so in a nutshell. So when doctors are interested in looking at the thyroid, they almost always order the TSH. Now here's where it gets interesting. Just ordering the TSH is probably not the best way to test your thyroid. In fact, I shouldn't say probably, I'm, I'm just telling you, it isn't the best way. In fact, you need other tests, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But I want you to understand where the TSH fits in. So is the TSH important? Yes, it does. It is important and it does play an important role in regulating your thyroid. But if it's the only test that you order and it's the only test you look at, you're missing probably 80 or 90% of the picture. Having said that, we are still going to talk about the TSH because it does have value, both in the healthy state and in the non-healthy state. But what you need to understand, um, and that's where we're going to start first, is the difference between an, a normal range and an optimal range. Okay, so this is the range that you'll probably see on your lab test. The range will be somewhere between 0.4 and 4.5 or 5.5. Sometimes it's 0.5 to 5.5. It's somewhere around there. Okay. It depends on the lab you're using. And that's an important point. And then the units will be right here. So you can look at the units, confirm that you have the same units and the same range here when you're looking at your own lab test. Okay. So why does this matter? First of all, because the range is produced and defined by local people in your area. Okay. And this includes both healthy and unhealthy people. So when you're looking at this huge range, it's statistically created and it's created to include all of these people. So when you are compared, your lab test is compared to other people, you might be compared to a 70 year old or to a 50 year old with heart failure or, or anything else, but you don't really care about that, right? You want to know how healthy am I? Are you healthy compared to this average population? And that's where we have to kind of manipulate the range a little bit. And that's what we're going to be talking about right now. Cause you don't want to be, you know, let's say, let's say 4.5 is the normal range for an 80 year old. Well, you don't really want to be there. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. So now that you understand this, so this is the broad range produced by the lab. We need to talk about where you want to live. Where does your TSH, where do you want your TSH to be? And we need to break that up into two separate categories. The first is off thyroid medication. And the second is on thyroid medication. Okay. Cause this is very important. Once you start taking thyroid medication, it manipulates and tweaks this whole system. Okay. So once you start twisting and manipulating the system, we don't have the ability to look at it quite as closely as we do if you're not on medication. And it changes a lot of things, okay? And I, I have other videos which talk about that. I'm not gonna get into them now. But just realize that once you take thyroid medication, you're impacting the system and you're artificially tweaking it a little bit. So what do you want though if you're off medication? What if you're not taking any medic medication you're wondering maybe if you should take thyroid medication or maybe you just wanna know, am I healthy? Well, here's the range that I recommend that you fall into. Somewhere between 0.5 and 1.0, and again, the same units as up here. So these are the same units. Okay, so why did I pick this range? Well, this is the range, well, pretty close. This is very close, uh, or this is close to the range that we want pregnant women to be in, okay? We also have some medical studies which show that most healthy adults, if they have no thyroid problems, fit somewhere in between this range of 1.0 to 0 0.5. Now, this doesn't guarantee that if you fit within this range, you're going to feel great, okay? There are going to be people that live somewhere in the 1.5 to 2.0 range, and they might feel okay, okay? That might exist, but the majority of you want to aim for this range. So if you're looking to just improve your health and stay healthy, that's the range that you wanna look for. And again, I'm, I'm getting this range because this is the range that we want pregnant women to be in, and we care about pregnant women because they, are, they, have, they have to have enough thyroid function for themselves and for their child, so it's really important. And their range is obviously different than the range that we have up here. Okay, 
So what about those who are on thyroid medication? This is where it gets a bit tricky, all right? And there's gonna be a lot of you who are in this situation. I would say probably more of you are taking thyroid medication and wondering where your TSH should be as opposed to those who are off thyroid medication. All right, so here's, here's where it gets a little tricky. I'm telling you the range here that is optimal for you is somewhere between 0.1 and 1.0, and you can bring down the same units here, okay? So this, the units remain the same, but 0.1 and 1.0. So you might notice something. Remember, the range here for the low end is 0.4. Now I'm telling you, the range can extend below that to 0.1. And if that occurs, you're going to get flagged as having a low result by your lab test. Because remember, it's outside of this range. But you have to remember that we are manipulating this lab test because we are introducing T4 into the system, which is going to drop this TSH. And you have to realize that your body, like when I give you thyroid medication or when your doctor gives you thyroid medication, it's never going to be as good as it's coming from the real thing. You have to account for that. This is true also of any hormone that we give people. If we give you testosterone, if we give you cortisol, if we give you whatever it is, if doctors give you these things, it's never as good as the real thing. So we have to account for that. And by doing so, we have to allow a little bit of leeway here. Okay, so a couple questions are gonna arise. Um, number one, this is not gonna be perfect for everyone. Okay, there will be people who might live at a lower TSH range, which might be suppressed. So I'm gonna write that down. So you generally want to avoid suppression of the TSH. And if you are suppressed, your result will come back something like this, less than 0 0.001 or less than 0 0.005, something like that. You want to avoid suppression if you can, okay? Um, because there are some conditions associated with TSH suppression, but generally they don't occur if, unless you've been suppressed for a long period of time. But you want to avoid it if you can. But there's a difference between being low and being suppressed, and that's what I'm saying here. Generally, it might be okay, depending on who you are and your age and some other factors. Now, I find that most people who have who are taking thyroid medication, as long as they're treating other problems, so it might be other hormone imbalances like leptin resistance or insulin resistance and managing these issues with the right diet, the right lifestyle, you know, they're sleeping enough, they're managing their stress, they're gonna be fine somewhere within that range. Yes, there might be some outliers. Remember, this is not perfect for everybody. You have to individualize your therapy, but I think this works for the majority of people. Okay, so now I said in the beginning, I mentioned that these ranges, um, these only represent one test that can evaluate your thyroid. Now, if you are getting, if you are serious about getting your thyroid tested and managed, you really need to be looking at different tests as well. So I want to at least pay or mention those right now. So the other tests that you want to get in addition to the TSH, remember, you want a clear picture of what's happening, include free T3, free T4, reverse T3, thyroid antibodies, and total T3. Okay, you should always be getting these tests if you're also getting your TSH. If you get your TSH and you're trying to treat based off of this number alone, you're going to have a bad time. You are not going to feel better and it's just going to be very difficult. And the reason is because you're missing about 80% of the picture. Okay? These lab tests give you the other 80 give you the other TSH gives you 10 to 20% of the thyroid picture. These lab tests give you the rest of it. So don't just dose space off the TSH. That's why I'm bringing this up. However, if you only have the TSH, fine. Use this. It might be somewhat helpful. But remember, you have to be getting these tests and these tests have their own um, optimal ranges and so on and I'll do videos on each one of those. So what I want to know from you, leave your comment below if you if you have had your TSH tested and if it's somewhere within this range and how you feel. And I think you will be very interested to see, those people who are reading the comments, you'll be interested to see that there will be people who have a low TSH who still feel bad. There'll be those people who have a high TSH who still feel bad. And I think if we if we went through it and we, we asked these patients, we would find that they did not get these tests. So leave your comment below, mention whatever your TSH is and tell me, are you feeling good? Are you feeling bad? Let us know so that we can look at that. Um, and otherwise, that's all I have for you in, the, in this video. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.